Hello and welcome to the Sport for Business Daily. It's a great pleasure today to welcome Bernard O'Byrne. He is the CEO of Basketball Ireland and a man who often has some great wisdom to impart on the wider world of sport. But let's kick off with basketball anyway, Bernard. Um, you've uh, announced today that there is a new charity partnership that you're going to be working with Jigsaw, the mental health charity. Tell us a little bit about the new relationship. Yes. Hi, Rob. Good to talk to you again. Um, well, you know, in our experience of dealing with all our young players, uh, you know, unfortunately, we, we have experience in uh, very challenging uh, things that have happened over the years. Um, not, not too many. Um, but, you know, you still, I think, need to think about these things and you need to have some infrastructure in place. Um, not, not necessarily only to deal with uh, incidents that arrive, but actually, you know, the preventative situation where people who need a bit of a, a bit of advice uh, know where to go and you know know that we have an association with experts uh, who can help them and uh, the great thing about this link up today I think is that we have uh, two of our players Sorpa Tiernan and uh, Kieran Rowe are going to be our ambassadors, along with Paul Keller, who is an under-18 international manager and also a guidance counsellor. So, you know, they're the voices that I think our young players are listening to, maybe more than mine or some of the other old fogies, you know. It's to get the message out that we are providing uh, an avenue, a resource there that people should go and talk to uh, if, if they've had any worries. I think, I think it's hugely important. I don't like to be picking up the pieces afterwards. I, I much prefer to be providing uh, a service beforehand. And Jigsaw have a fantastic reputation. We have been speaking to them over the, the last couple of months and absolutely a joy to work with. So we're really looking forward to this link up. They'll understand the sporting area as well. They've worked with Lidl and with Ladies Gaelic Football Association over the past year as well. So it's, it is, it's really important. You never know the hour, the moment that somebody will be in need. But I think there is a great responsibility on sport and coaches as figures of authority within young lives, especially in these times in which we live. The, the, the challenges that COVID have presented from a human perspective are are there playing for all to see. But from an organisational point of view, the, the world of sport has obviously been turned on its head. We've seen some of the big field sports beginning to come back. We've seen some great action in uh, you know, club GAA across the country. The Premier League has been back. I know you were conscious of, uh, of Liverpool's celebration last year of winning the Premier League. But for indoor sports, challenges run a little bit deeper. We know the numbers, 20 times more likely for infection rates to, to, you know, to spiral in an indoor as opposed to an outdoor setting. How has basketball, as probably one of our larger indoor sports, been meeting that challenge? Well, I think the important thing is to keep reins on the enthusiasm of people or, if you like, the desire of people to get back. You know, they want to be playing basketball. They want to get back. Now, overall, I think we've encountered a hugely responsible approach. You know, uh, in terms of uh, all the logistics of the sanitization, temperature checks and whatever, I don't foresee you know, that we'll have a problem with our clubs in that. They, they, if they're allowed to get back, they will want to carry that out with, uh, with, with great professionalism or a, a great responsibility, if you like. So our, our, our drive has to be as an organisation just to tell everybody to back off, just to slow down a little bit. Um, we also have to convince people that no matter what happens at this stage, the season... Uh, 2020-21 is going to be a very different season to all other basketball seasons. So that, by that I mean there might be a vastly re reduced amount of games. There might be cup competitions that will have to be cancelled. Um, but we hope at every level of the game that we will get basketball back in some form. And whatever that form is, they need to enjoy it and embrace it. And, and, and I think they will. Um, but generally, I think they're, they're very responsible. They do listen to us. Um, we've set up a return to play group. We have a, an app that we rolled out there a couple of weeks ago. And as I say, the, the response that we're getting is not argumentative or saying, why can't we, you know, it's more, what do we need to do to make the sport come back? And, um, you know, we just have to take it step by step. You know, we had a meeting last Tuesday and everything kind of changed then by Friday. 
we, with various things going on and decisions we've made. As you say, we, we've stepped down uh, friendly games right, right across uh, the grades, including the National League, which is hugely difficult for our elite uh, teams to have ba basically no preparation for their season, which is due to start on the 17th of October. So that might go back a week or two weeks. You know, Whatever has to be done, we as an organisation will do it. You've been quite imaginative in meeting the challenge as well. I really liked the, the slam dunk initiative. So you've taken the template of what needs to be done. But you've translated it into language that your own members, that your own players, probably of that younger generation would understand. There's yeah. an awful lot of time obviously has to go into the science and the logistics and the technical side. But do you think enough has been done in terms of that explanation side of why this is important? Well, I need to be careful. I'm very reluctant, you know, to to uh, to um, criticise the authorities. I, the the job that they have is is really huge, you know. Uh, certainly, I think I, I don't think I'm being controversial in saying some of the communication has left a lot to be desired. But I think, as I said a couple of minutes ago, I, I think from my point of view, let's say, I think it's important that it's not me and those uh, the, uh, at my level. I, I think it's much better if we can get players and young people speaking to young people, whether that's through social media or I, I saw the teacher mentioning influencers, which I just barely know what they are. But I, I know that young people listen to them. And I, I think that I think that's the way to go. Communication is, is the key here. And again, I would say that it, to my mind and my experience, the young people are great. They're, they understand the seriousness of it. They want their sport back, but they, they want to do it properly as well. I, I haven't come across people who want to uh, short circuit things or take shortcuts or whatever. You know, they want to do it properly. And I, and I think just talking about the innovation, I think we have a little bit of advantage maybe in basketball in that we have this kind of secondary game, if you like, I don't mean secondary, I mean probably alternative, this three-on-three -three that we have which is something that we're really rolling, rolling out to clubs now and saying, look, if you can't get back to five and five and whatever, you need to really, really get into three and three, which we have been pushing and pushing. And that can be managed easier in a club setting to have three and three training, three and three. And that will keep people going because they can run internal competitions within a club or even within their area. And it is a substitute. It's not the real thing for leagues and cups and whatever, but, it, but it's something to be done. And then we have a, a huge... Um, we have a huge amount of skills uh, on our website that people can go and have a look at those skills videos. And when we get into the dark winter evenings now, you know, if we're not fully back, you know, I think they're, they're the areas that uh, that our, our communi community can, can go to. One of the last things, just before I let you go, the one thing that concerned me over the, the return to school has been the, the decision by a number of schools right in the short term, but I worry about the longer term implications of transitioning some of the halls and some of the spaces which have been devoted to a growing sense of importance around PE and court sports. Basketball has obviously benefited from that in the sense of, of having more places to play, but those are being taken back now and they're being transitioned into classroom spaces. Is that something that we need to be mindful of and that we need to make sure is done only for so long as it's important to get done? Yes, absolutely, definitely. It, uh, we, we did a survey out, out around all our clubs to see who, who, how many were losing holes and whatever. Uh, it's patchy around the country. You know, there are a lot of schools that have told the clubs no, those halls will be available or whatever. And, uh, you know, equally, there's a big number that have said no. Some of them have nearly been without reason. They were just closing the school, sorry, closing the hall, but not actually using it for classrooms, which you can understand. So I suppose, again, it's priorities for school principals. Uh, I, I, you know, I have a couple of relations who are teachers and they're in that, and it's huge pressure on them to make sure everything is absolutely right. So again, reluctant to criticise anybody, but you're right, it is having an impact uh, on us. And, you know, we just have to try and resolve it. We're also finding that when we go to uh, 
when we go to gyms or facilities that are commercial, we're also finding that the rates are going up. It's just supply and demand. What can, what can you say? So in fairness, again, you know, the Resilience Fund, we have mentioned that in applications into the Resilience Fund uh, to, maybe, to maybe help people out. So, you know, I think all we can do is do the best that we can for as long as we can. Well, I'm sure that's a uh, that's a, a sentiment which will be echoed across other sports as well. Uh, the very best of luck. October the 17th, we'll keep an eye out on that for the the, uh, the the presumed restart of the National Leagues. And we've seen throughout other sports the, the lift in terms of morale that it gives to communities. I know how important basketball is within the communities in which it is played. So the very best of luck to you and all of the team there in Basketball Ireland. But for the moment, thank you very much, Bernard O'Byrne. Thank you very much, Rob. Stay well.